Dick Barton, Special Agent. Wilhelm Kramer and his gang have stolen the new secret weapon, the invention of two British scientists, Sir Archie Rangel and James Thurgood. It is Kramer's intention to hold the civilized world to ransom with this weapon, and he has persuaded one of the inventors, James Thurgood, to operate it for him. Kramer is now short of the formula for the protective antidote that must be worn by the operator. This antidote is the invention of Sir Archie Rangel, who dashes out of the office of Colonel Gardner, head of MO13, having left the vital papers in his pocket at home. Hold on, Sir Archie. Confound the man. He's off like a shot rabbit. Right. 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 I'll take the lift. It's quicker. Ah, yes, and it's waiting on this floor. That lift wasn't working. Perfectly all right, Miss Hunter, when I used it an hour ago. I shan't be long. Oh! oh, great heavens. Look, Barton. There's no floor in it. <coughs> Come on. We're on the second floor, Barton. That means he's fallen two stories. I don't want to be depressing, Colonel Gardner. At this age. It would be such perfect swines to do such a thing. Don't think it was the old boy at all, Miss Hunter. I think it was for my benefit. If you're right, sir, they wouldn't harm Sir Archie. He's got the other half of the secret weapon. He had the other half. You mean it may have gone already? Ah, here we are. But if uh, you'll just give me your hand, uh, sir. You're the night porter on duty. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Horrible business, this, sir. All right, all right. Let me lift him. Oh, I can uh, manage myself. Uh, there. Uh, Let's have a look. Uh, uh, it's, uh, it's my shoulder and left leg. Phone for an ambulance, Jean, will you? Yes, sir. Uh, phone in my office there, miss. Bye. What? What happened? Somebody had tempered with the lift. Your fault, Gardner. Blast you. All right, Sir Archie. Take it easy. Shouldn't have brought me here. Anyone else uh, hurt? Just your shoulder and leg. Seems like it. Uh, You're lucky, sir. You should be dead. Take some killing, we wrangles. It's probably meant for me, not you. Well, that's a lot of comfort. Porter? Y yes, sir. How long have you been on duty? Uh, three hours, sir. Have you let anyone into the building apart from Sir Archie? Oh, yes, sir. Just after Sir Archie came in the place and went up in the lift with two coppers, the, the, the coppers come down and went out, and, well, then two electricians come in to fix the lift, they said. Why did you let them in? Well, they had special passes, sir. Did you recognise them? I did not, sir. You have to take off your hat to these other people, sir. Their staff works first rate. I could do with a drink. Ah, here, Jean. Okay, Jean. Uh, yes, sir. Ambulance coming right away. And I've brought some brandy from the first aid chest. Well, that was thoughtful. Oh, thank you, kind sir. Well, I mean, girls don't usually think of these things. The brandy, sir. Thanks. Your remarks ah. about girls, you don't seem to know much about them. <laughs> Take a swig of this, Archie. Mm, mm, mm. Ah, it's better. Now, listen, Gardner. Yes? You better get along to my place. Brown sports jacket. Jacket hanging in the wardrobe in my bedroom. Inside pocket, you'll find a blue envelope. Uh, that's what you want. Better lock it up somewhere safe. Why not destroy that damn thing? Because you may need it one day. If these people should find any way of working that weapon, which, God forbid, then you'll need the formula in that blue envelope. The sooner we get hold of it, then, the better. I don't feel comfortable while it's lying in that empty house. So, listen, Jean, I want you to stay with Sir Archie. Colonel Gardner, I am your assistant, shall Of course, and so you obey orders. Yes, sir. Not the sort of work for a woman, this... There are times, Captain Barton, when you appear to be an extremely irritating person. This is one of them. Listen, Jean. Ring up the barracks, get a guard, take them with you in the ambulance to the hospital, and arrange for them to stay on guard over Sir Archie all night. What? Arrange with the barracks for the guards to be changed night and morning. What the devil is all... All right, Sir it's... Archie, you're not a prisoner. It sounds devilish like it. I'm not taking any chances. They've got the weapon and your colleague, James Thurgood. The only thing missing now is your formula. And the best way for them to get hold of that is to get hold of you. You've got all that, Jean? Yes, sir. Well, in the circumstances, it might be an idea if you went along to the hospital and saw Sir Archie comfortably settled. I will. Oh, yeah. I think that's all, Sir Archie. Oh, I wish to heaven I'd never had anything to do with a confounded invention. <laughs> so say all of us. Still, <laughs> too late now. How's the leg and shoulder? Oh, not too bad. This fellow's fixed me up as well as possible. You'll think, do, sir. Uh, Till they do the job properly at the hospital. Warm enough? Yes, yes, but, oh, you can give me another snifter. Mm -hmm. Ah, that's better. I think I'll keep this by me, just in case I feel faint. Right, Barton. We'll be on our way if you're ready. I'm ready. And when we've collected this thing and put it safely away... Oh, just a sec. What? Better get you fixed up. Hang on. Now what? You armed. Armed? Me? No, of course not. It's an offence without a special licence, isn't yes. it? Yes. But in this game you feel silly if the other side has a permanent advantage in that line. Yeah, I see your point. How long have you been mixed up with all this? Long enough to know my way about. Woman's place is in the hole. Yeah, yeah, Sir Archie, that's what I always say. Never did care for the gun mull type. I beg your pardon. You know what I mean. I do not know what you mean, Captain Barton. 
Unless you consider me to be the gun mall type, as you put it. I'd like to see a woman with children at her knee, roses around the door and all that, knitting tiny garments, you know. In that case, I suggest you get married without delay and leave this sort of work to people who can cope with it. <laughs> hoity toity, my proud beauty. Oh, my lad, you seem to have said the wrong thing. <laughs> Here you are, Barton. It's loaded. Thank you, sir. Oh, takes me back a bit, this. Thought it wouldn't feel too strange in your hand. Right. Come on, then, Barton. We'll get along. I've got your address, Sir Archie. Eh? Warren, Framley Garden. Yes, eh? that's right. Yes. Cheer ho. <laughs> Bye, Jean. See you later. Goodbye, sir. Well, good luck, Sir Archie. I'll pop into the hospital and see you tomorrow. Well, don't bring me any flowers. I loathe them. My, uh, my car's standing by, Barton. Okay, sir. Framley Gardens, Carter. You know the way. Yes, sir. Sir Archie Wrangles, please. We don't seem to be doing too well, do we, sir? I mean, Cromer and his crowd are holding most of the trump cards to date. They've got the secret weapon. They've kidnapped one of the men who invented it. It isn't really our fault. We're still here at all. That's true enough. They can't work the weapon without Sir Archie's formula. In any case, they'll need a plane to use it at all. What do you think they'll do, then? Well, obviously, their first job, assuming that James Thurgood is prepared to work with them, will be to get hold of either Sir Archie or his formula. Then they'll smuggle everything out of the country, get hold of some aircraft, Hold the whole world to ransom. Is the weapon frightful enough to do that? Without the slightest doubt, Barton. If they are in a position to use the weapon, and once its details are made known, they could be masters of the world, I'm sure of it. Well, our only hope lies in the fact that they haven't got the formula, then. And the fact that, first, they can't very well get out of the country, and, second, we don't know for certain that James Thurgood is going to be on their side. They can uh, persuade him, though. No? They certainly can, and will, if necessary. Hmm. I'm looking forward to making the acquaintance of friend Wilhelm Kramer. He seems a decent type. You'll do anything for money and power, particularly power. And you really think that if Kramer gets hold of this weapon and can operate it, then he's sitting pretty? Once the public know about it, yes. He can make his own terms. It must be a pretty bright sort of weapon. Well, to get some idea, think over all you know about mustard gas, lewisite, phosgene, add a touch of leprosy, multiply all that a few times, and you have a remote suspicion of the cumulative effects of this weapon on the human frame. But surely a gas like that would prove difficult to put into action. It's the whole point, Barton. That's the devilish ingenuity of the thing. It's not a gas at all. All those effects are caused by a ray from a machine which can be operated by one man. The whole thing is a sort of byproduct of atomic research. Oh, ah, well. Thank heavens Kramer's still short of part of the thing. We hope. You think they may be already on the trail? If I were Kramer... I was short of the one vital link. I'd send someone along to Wrangle's house in the hope that the old boy might have done precisely what he did do, left the darn thing behind. And if James Thurgood has talked, then Cromwell will know what to look for. In that case, the sooner we get to Framley Gardens, the better. Oh, shan't be long. And, uh, Barton. Yes? If it should be necessary to shoot, then make sure you do it for the other fellow. You got past the kid glove stage in this affair. Mind you, I understand from what old Wrangle said that Cromer already has sufficient information to operate the weapon if James Thurgood will help him. Yes, he has, but only at the expense of the operator's sight. Oh, yes, it attacks the eyes first, I remember. And however fanatical Thurgood may be, I can't see him deliberately blinding himself just to help Cromer out of a hole. No, as you say, everything depends on Sir Archie's formula. And here's Sir Archie's house. Hello, sir. Everything quiet here since Sir Archie left? Who might you be, sir, to want to know? Uh, take a look at this. Oh, sorry, sir. Can't be too careful, you know. That's all right. No suspicious characters around? I see nobody, sir. All as peaceful as a marriage feast, you might say. You the only man on duty? No, sir. There's another chap patrolling round the back. Isn't there anyone living in the house? Did Sir Archie live alone? No, he had a housekeeper. She wouldn't stay in the place on her own, though. Said he gave her the creeps or something. Don't know what she meant. There ain't nobody in the place now, anyway, sir. It looks pretty dark and gloomy. Uh, no, no light, sir. Well, I think the housekeeper must have switched them off at the main before she left. Got a torch with you, Barton? No. Lend me your torch, officer, will you please? Got a bit of searching to do. Certainly, sir. Here you are. Watch the switch. It's a bit of a faulty contact. It's all right when you've got the knack. Thanks. Well, come on, Barton. If we're not out in ten minutes, officer, come in after us with your pal, will you? Yes, sir. Come on, then. Oh, constable, tell my driver he can park the car over there. Very good, sir. Certainly is a gloomy looking place. It's an oldish house. Hey, just a minute. What the? Oh, hello, officer. Just seen your pal at the gate. Yeah. 
take a look at this. Uh, oh, sorry, sir. Uh, carry on. I've asked him to give us ten minutes in there, and if we're not out, they'll come in after us. Uh, right, sir. Uh, everything's quiet enough, though, sir. Oh, good. Door's not locked, is it? No, sir. You don't know where the electric main switch is, do you? I don't, sir. I haven't been in the place. I don't fancy as much from what I've heard. Oh, why? Well, old Wrangle was a scientist, you know. There's all sorts of queer things in that laboratory of his. That's all they tell me, sir. So who tells you? Oh, local gossip, you know. This is my beat, sir, mm. round here. Doesn't do to pay too much attention to that. Come on, Barton. Give us ten minutes, officer. Yes, sir. Nuisance about the lights. Ah, there we are. We're in, anyway. There are the stairs facing us. Should be able to tell the old boys for them easily enough. <sighs> Torch isn't too hot. Ah, that's better. The switch keeps jamming. Now then, try this room. Definitely not. No, I guess you're right. Housekeeper, perhaps. We'll try the next one, then. No, nope. bathroom. We'll try this. Ah, this looks more like it. Yes, there's the wardrobe. Ah, sports jacket. Here we are. You held the torch. Now look in the pocket. That's it. Here, what's this? Envelope. Blue, this is it. Shine the torch. Here. Yeah, lots of figures and things. That's it, all right. I'll have it, thanks. Well, good night's work, Barton. Once this is safely under lock and key, we can breathe a little more freely. Why, what's up? Not a bad idea to see who it is. This torch is the very devil. Here's the phone. Right. Hello? Is that Colonel Gardner? Yes, speaking. This is Jean Hunter. Oh, hello, Jean. What's the trouble? It's about Sir Archie. I'm afraid he's a bit delirious. Is he? Poor old chap. But he keeps telling me to warn you by phone about his specimen. What? What do you mean by that? I don't know. But he's most insistent that you should be careful and that I was to warn you urgently about his specimen. Oh. And he says you must come away from his house as soon as you can. Well, we finished what we came here for, so that's all right. Won't affect us. Well, I'll see you tomorrow, sir. Yes, see you tomorrow. You'll get some sleep. Guard okay? Yes, everything's under control. Good. Night, Jean. Good night, sir. Jean Hunter. Oh, boy isn't too good. A bit delirious. Sorry about that. Thought he seemed too perky after that fall. Hmm. Keeps on telling Jean to warn us about his specimens, whatever that may mean. Specimens? Of what? She doesn't know. She's most insistent that we should be careful, so she rang to warn us. Well, it's good of her, but I wish I knew what she was warning us about. It doesn't matter much in view of the fact that we're leaving anyway. Ah, darn this torch. What on earth? It came from that room, sir. Shine the torch. I'm trying to. Unauthorized visitors, eh? Have a gun ready. Come on. Watch out. Maybe a trick. I'll fling the door open. Help! Help! Take it off me! Take it off! Shine the torch, sir. It won't work. Listen. Listen, sir. There's something alive coming this way. What is the secret of the room? What has happened to the man who screamed? What is crawling towards Gardner and Barton? Listen to the next installment of Dick Barton, Special Agent.